So if we look at the DevOps lifecycle, it's always represented as this little infinite loop thingy, right? So if we're just getting started, where do you start at? Hey, I'm Will. This is DevOps for Developers. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I break a new project down into manageable pieces to implement DevOps practices. So for a new project, I like to start with the developers and the development team who are actually going to be writing the code that I'm trying to implement DevOps practices for. Because if I can get some small wins there, I start to build a rallying support base who's excited to see this thing go full scale. Not only that, but by showing them how this directly benefits them, it kind of uh, gives them some incentive to want to help out. And a lot of times what I see is the development team will start to implement their own DevOps practices, which means they're taking work off of my plate so I can go hang out at the beach or in the mountains or go spend time in a Buddhist retreat in silence. Anyway, so one of the ways that I've had the most success doing that is by helping them build out their development environment on their workstation using DevOps practices. So what that means is I will take all of the dependencies that they need to write code. Let's say they're working on a Node.js application. So we'll actually run Node.js in a Docker container on their workstation and they'll need a database to talk to. So we'll run that in another Docker container. And then I create a make file that wraps all of that up so that anytime someone wants to launch the development environment and edit the code on it, all they have to do is type a single command on their laptop or their workstation, and it just brings everything up. Now, if you want to see exactly how I do that, I've actually created a video on that that shows the process and links to the GitHub repo where you can check out the code that I use to make that work. I'll throw a link to it right up there. And then I'll also put a link down in the description down below. So check that out if that's interesting to you. So now that the development team is up and running, it's time to go start focusing on building the staging environment. And because of the work we did on the development environment, I've probably got a pretty good idea of what that should look like, as well as I've gotten some feedback from the development team in what the overall application is going to look like in a deployed structure. So that gives me a lot of insight and knowledge so that I know what it is I'm supposed to be building out in staging. Now, one of the things I do when I build up a staging environment this first pass is I tend not to focus a lot on automation because I've done this enough times to know that my first version of the staging environment, its sole purpose is to just tell me everything else that I didn't know that I needed to know. So I've learned to, to just build something out, get it out there and get feedback quickly rather than stressing over trying to automate this thing and write a ton of automation code that ultimately gets deleted or never used because I didn't have all the information I needed to start with. But once that's built, then I'll go through and I'll write the code to deliver the infrastructure as code, right? And then once that's done, I'll tear down that first staging environment I built and redeploy it using the code that I've written just to guarantee that, you know, there was nothing manually done in staging that I forgot to write code for, or we don't have any artifacts left over there in that environment. And then, you know, whenever that's happening, there's most of the time there's like some dead spots where you don't really have anything to do. You're waiting for feedback or some more information or whatever. So usually in parallel with that, I'll start to build out the CI CD pipeline, which is continuous integration, continuous deployment. And I follow the same principle here. You know, I only work on small pieces at a time and just deliver small bits of it at a time and get feedback on that. So the first thing I'll do is just, um, you know, run the test suite whenever a pull request is opened. And then if that test suite fails, block that from being merged into production. And then the next step, once that's working, I'll add, you know, building a Docker image if that's what we're doing. And then once that's done, we can start looking at ways to automate the deployment to the staging environment. 
And so just breaking it up into a little bit of chunks and just continuously delivering value to my customers, the development team, so that they see forward progress and that they start to get an idea of what this looks like whenever it's all put together. Now, part of that process also involves health checks. So I'll go back to the development team and try to dig in and understand what this application looks like when it's running so that we have good quality health checks for both every running Docker container and for the application as a whole so that we can tell which Docker containers are healthy, which ones aren't, and whether or not our entire application is healthy. So now by this point, we've given our dev team a ton of tools to automate the build and deploy of their application. And they're gonna be super pumped, but they actually need more and they may not even know what more they need or may, they may not know what else to ask for. So one of the things we're gonna give them is a consolidated place that allows them to view the logs from actions happening out in production without the need to give them production level access. And that leads us to our next question. Why are they looking at the logs? Well, good question. They're looking at the logs because the monitoring dashboard has told them that something has deviated from our normal acceptable range of values. And then you're going to ask, Why are they looking at the monitoring dashboard? Another excellent question. They're looking at the monitoring dashboard because the alerting system sent out notifications to the on-call devs and to the ops team letting them know that a threshold has been breached for our application. By the way, if you're building dashboards, which you will be, be sure and check out this video on how to build dashboards that are actually useful, meaningful, and they work for you, not against you. Okay, so none of these systems exist. So that's the next step in our DevOps project to build out our monitoring, alerting, and logging systems that give the ops and development teams the information they need to ensure that we are delivering the production application that meets our customer standards. And I don't want to say that's it, but that's it. Because here's the thing, like once you get to this point, you're delivering some powerful tools to your team that's going to allow them to deliver software faster and more reliably. And that's going to also give them the ability to do more which is going to create more needs. So you're going to build more tools that gives them the ability to go faster. And it just sort of starts this snowball effect. You know, the more tools that you give them, the better they're able to do their job, which gives them the, the capabilities to do even more, which creates the need for more tools. And it just snowballs like that, right? So I think this is like a really good high level way to focus on DevOps projects. If you deliver these things, you're going to build momentum. You're going to build team members who are incentivized to make this go further, which is going to create needs. And that's going to tell you what you need to build next. That's the big takeaway for this video. Focus on delivering those concepts. You're going to build maturity in your organization, which is going to define what your career path looks like going forward. So what do you think? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Click the button down below and let me know and leave me a comment on what you liked or what you didn't like. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. So, I think, and that's the big. Blah, 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 blah.